Hey, friendo, Steve here. Welcome back to the channel. Figured it was a good time to do another one of those Ask Me Anything gimmicks. Uh, so I put up a thread on our community tab here at WrestleJuice, uh, and then you asked a bunch of really great questions. Uh, I couldn't answer them all here in the video, uh, so the ones that I'm not answering here in the video, I'm going to go on to the community tab, and I'm just going to write my answers back to you. Uh, so if you're not in the video, my apologies. There's a lot of questions, uh, but you'll get a response regardless. So let's hop into the first one. This is a very controversial topic. I'm sure a lot of the friendos over at Going In Raw are uh, well-versed with my current one-sided rivalry with Christian Cage because Brocky Kaiser says, Steve, I'm very interested to know why you are not that big of a fan for Christian Cage, of Christian Cage. So here's the thing. I'm going to break kayfabe here, if you will. I'm, I don't hate Christian. I don't dislike him, really, for the most part. You know how we're all fans and we all take to certain wrestlers. We're always like, oh, wow, I really like this guy. And then sometimes you just don't like somebody. Somebody's like, oh, this guy. I guess that's sort of me with Christian Cage. I think this goes back to like, I don't know, it was probably a couple of years ago. Somebody asked uh, the question, do you think Christian, Christian Cage Christian, should be in the Hall of Fame? Is, is he, should he be a Hall, is he a Hall of Famer? And my answer, just thought about it, was no. It's just no. I, I don't think, I think that as a tag team with Edge, yes, 100%, absolutely. On his own, if you really want to add to the prestige of the Hall of Fame, I kind of feel like he was just a second banana guy to, to Edge, sort of just how I feel. Here's one of my main problems with Christian. Christian's actually really, really good as a heel. I really liked his earlier years with Edge when they were doing the five-second pose stuff after they split and he did some stuff with Jericho. I, he's got a really, really great heel persona, and I love the Edge and Christian show. I think it's like one of the funniest things WWE's ever done. I'm actually a fan of Christian Cage himself. The performer is pretty fantastic. He is a, a really good wrestler. Uh... I feel like he should be a bad guy, though. Whenever he's been a good guy, like, for example, right now, he's got this rivalry and impact with Ace Austin, or at least they have a match coming up. Even as a good guy, Christian can't help but do promos that he comes off as kind of a prick. Because what did he clown on Ace Austin in his promo? It was his height, because Ace Austin isn't very tall, and Christian is sort of classic WWE wrestlers, tall guy, right? And so I just feel like his promos are usually just like low-hanging fruit for me. They're not particularly clever. He just comes off as a dick. And I'm like, that works if you're a bad guy. If you're a heel, I'll probably be all about the guy. But he's supposed to be a good guy. Outwork everyone was like the most boring catchphrase I could think of. Um... So, yeah, that's kind of it. It's not like I don't actually hate the guy, but I also play it up a lot because it's more entertaining to do that uh, at, at going in raw because Larson's all about him and I'm anti and it just makes for a better entertaining product. Uh, so, yeah, that's my thing about Christian. I think it just goes back. Somebody asked. And here's my thing about him being a Hall of Fame. He was gone for seven years and was never inducted in the Hall of Fame. So even Vince McMahon seemingly doesn't want to put Christian there. But also, when I look at his career as a singles guy, yeah, he's highly decorated. He's got, I think, two world title runs, but both those world title runs were when the big gold belt were decidedly the secondary belt. Like, there, I really don't even think there was much if, 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 or, or, if, and, or buts about it. Something like that. It was a secondary title. So it's basically like he's won basically like the Intercontinental Championship a bunch of times, which maybe you're a Hall of Famer. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'd look, I wouldn't. It's 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 basically a joke. It's kind of a gag. I respect the man as a wrestler, not his biggest fan of the on screen character. And as a wrestling fan, as long as I don't get weird or toxic about it, I'm allowed to openly not be a fan of somebody. Right. Right. All right. Moving on. Geeked Out Nation, who should Punk feud with after Darby? I actually made a video about this, what should be done about CM Punk, where I kind of basically outline his first year. I'm going to say his second rivalry should be with, uh, put him in a thing with Daniel Garcia. You have a high-profile guy with uh, Darby Allen, and then have him do uh, Daniel Garcia for his next match. 
and then move him on to MJF for his next big feud. I think MJF would be the perfect, the perfect next big feud, big feud for CM Punk because you're making use of all their promo abilities and you've got uh, MJF talking shit about, oh, you're just another old timer they're bringing in. This should be about youth, et cetera, et cetera. But MJF can do it a lot better than I just uh, put it, which is pretty boring. Quote the Raven says, something I've wondered about the business side of a podcast. When you go to live events, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, all out of those press events, can you write that off as a business expense? Yes, absolutely. Anything I put into my business or anything you put into your business, you can totally write off as a business expense, and I totally do it. He said, but save your receipts. He says, if so, what exactly can you write off? Tickets, hotel, travel, etc. Anything, anything. Tickets, hotel, travel. Uh, I think you can write off meals, transportation, pretty much your entire existence for however many days that uh, particular thing happened, you can write off. Not if you go like shopping to the mall or something, if you're in town and you're like, oh, I'm here in Chicago for all out. I'm going to go to the mall and buy a PS4. You can't write that off. But anything that you have, any necessities for the trip, you you can write off. There's some business advice for you. John Davies uh, says, hey, Steve, when growing up, did your time in the UK, however brief, significantly impact you? Your sense of humor, outlook on life. Yeah, I, I, I grew up in England for about four years when I was seven to about 11 or so. And uh, it had a huge impact on me. It was a lovely place. We, I grew up on like a really small Air Force base called Chick Sands. And it had like a haunted house on it and stuff. It was awesome. It was great. It was a really awesome way to grow up. And, uh, and yeah, well, I watched my fair share of the BBC and listened to my fair share of uh, Top of the Pops. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I definitely have an affinity for, for British culture. I love I don't get back there very often, but when I do, I always have a blast. I love just being in the culture. It's fun. It's like, honestly, England is just like an alternate universe version of America, which isn't surprising given our roots. David Martinez, would you consider a story playthrough of the old SmackDown games? Yes, I would consider it. I've I've actually like bought a bunch of retro games that I have not. I keep on meaning to play them either on my Twitch or here on the channel or do something with it. But finding time is exceedingly hard to do. I still have to do. I really want to get back to my rebooked series where I do 2K19 rebookings of all the WWE pay-per-views. But I haven't gotten around to it. I just it, it takes time, and time is uh, is precious these days. Bob 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 says, if you could push any jobber in WWE or AEW to the main event scene, who would it be? Uh, Will Hobbs from AEW. He's not really a jobber, but I would totally push him to the main event scene. I think he's great. Uh, also, jobbers in the WWE. I mean, the twenty four seven division has guys like Drew Gulak and Berto Carrillo. Now it's got Cedric Alexander and Sheldon Benjamin. Drew Gulak and Umberto Carrillo, I think, should get pushes. Uh, Jackson Creek, if you could bring together any two people from any promotion, what dream match would you create in the current wrestling climate? He uh, says, I've been trying to manifest a strong style Walter versus John Moxley match for years. Give me um, British strong style, so Mustache Mountain and Pete Dunn versus. Uh, like FTR and MJF. That could be fun. That's cool. Pinnacle versus British strong style. I'd be down for that. Uh, Carmel, what ratings out of 10 would you give to WWE and AEW based on how much you've enjoyed them this year? Um, AEW, I'd give, I know I just dropped this video the day. AEW, you can't help, but I give them a eight out of 10. Still feel like they need to work on their women's division, but Holy moly. AEW has been really enjoyable. WWE, it's hard to give them anything more than a 5 out of 10. They, there, ha, there have been enjoyable moments. Maybe like a 6 out of 10. There's been enjoyable moments. And some of what they do can be interesting at times. But they really need to get their act together. So a 5 out of 10 for WWE. 8.5 out of 10 for AEW. Uh, Air Cool says, Ever thought about doing your own 10 for the wins on this channel? Doesn't even need to be about wrestling. It could be about general topics. This is now firmly a wrestling channel, so if I did it, it'd have to be about wrestling. Uh, if I, it, I, I don't know if I would do it. it. It takes a lot of time, effort, and resources to do a top 10 thing. I've considered it. I have thought about it, like doing it and then throwing it over to, to Rob to edit. I, it's, it's just people do t- top 10 lists a lot. Like, I know me and Larson, that's like what we built our career off of. 
but people, other people have picked up that particular, like you can get those over. I know uh, Blompiette, I think, does them over at Parts of Unknown and Cultaholic obviously does them. There's a lot of good top tens out there. I'd consider it, but again, it's sort of like a how much time do I have in a day type thing. I've actually thought about, I had this idea from a YouTube video that came across my recommended, getting on Fiverr and having somebody write me a top 10 script and and then sending that to to Rob to edit because then it would take all my work out of it. Like somebody else would just write a script for me and I'd read it. It would just be, be some like random person off Fiverr that's writing a script and then I'd, I'd, but that would be the gag. It's like, say, hey, this is written by somebody from Fiverr. Here's my top 10. And, see, and, then, and then, like, see what they have to, see what their top 10 would look like. John Adams, does AEW have an issue with showcasing wrestlers in high profile matches or feud or feuds? For example, Daniel Garcia in 2.0 come out of nowhere with no build or momentum to feud and attack Darby and Sting. Shouldn't people that have momentum and purpose be involved in those stories? No, this is why. I actually love the way they do this. I firmly believe, and I have not been, I have no no info about this whatsoever. I believe that uh, somewhere, probably on his computer, in his Google Docs, Tony Khan has a very sophisticated spreadsheet of how he books AEW. And by that I mean, because he's an analytics guy, he comes from the world of analytics. He probably takes a look at like ratings and then who he likes and figures out the exact balance of where do we put main event guys, big name guys, how do we use them to feature guys like Daniel Garcia, who obviously have a heavy future in pro wrestling, but might not be well known, 2.0, who just comes out of nowhere, but you know they're talented and you know if you get them in front of people, they are going to make an impact. And so I think that he's got a really good formula figured out. Leading up to Punk Darby Allen, you really shouldn't be throwing guys in there like the uh, Men of the Year, for example, to feud with uh, Sting and Darby. Number one, they've already kind of done that. Well, they've totally done that already. But guys at that level, I don't think you do that because whoever's in that role is both main eventing for that week meaning when Daniel Garcia and, and Darby were having their match before the punk thing, they're main eventing that week, but they're also kind of an asterisk. They're kind of an afterthought. So you elevate somebody who's coming out of nowhere to a prominent spot to say, hey, this is a guy to keep an eye out on. But then when he loses, it doesn't really matter because you're not killing his momentum because he didn't have any momentum in the first place. So you're not damaging anybody's momentum by making them a guy that Darby really should be looking past. And you're also at the same time featuring somebody that wasn't that 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 wasn't being featured at all, but you know should be featured and will be featured in the future. Does that make sense? I think it does. Uh, let's see here. Zoe Canrana. There are a lot of moments that make us ashamed to be wrestling fans. What are some that make you proud to be a fan of wrestling? Uh, whenever I see anything that has to do with Make-A-Wish stuff, like John Cena, that stuff makes me proud to be fans of wrestling, a fan of wrestling, because I think that stuff is terrific. Uh, Amara Hussein, what do you value most when it comes to uh, work slash career? What a great question. I think there's a good balance that everybody has to find between being creatively satisfying with your own stuff, as a content creator anyways, being uh, uh, satisfied creatively and getting that bag, making that money. So if you can do both these things and balance them out, if you're horribly unsatisfied creatively and you have a giant bag, you got to figure out a way to get satisfied creatively. If you've got no bag, but you're really satisfied creatively, well, you can't eat satisfaction, can you? You can't pay your mortgage off this wonderful creative satisfaction. And so you got to figure out a way to pay them bills. So it's just finding a good balance. And I feel like that's one thing Russell Juice has really done. Not that I don't feel creatively satisfied with going in raw, but there's other stuff that I want to do, like the face app stuff, the Austin reviews, which yes, SummerSlam Austin reviews coming up this weekend. Um, there's other stuff that I want to do. The door is still open. The you know, there's still a lot of stuff I can do with Russell Juice, and I like having that open to being able to do that stuff that doesn't really work with going in raw. So I, especially with wrestling, I found like some of the creative satisfaction. I've been able to incorporate some of my art. I got a new shirt coming up this coming weekend as well. And then, and it's also helped me increase the bag. So it's all good stuff here at Russell Juice. And that's what I think you should value most is that balance between bag and creativity. 
Uh, Cameron Dobby, is there anyone in AEW you think you should uh, would you would do better in WWE? Yeah, Will, Will Hobbs. I think Will Hobbs is a talent that is being criminally underused in AEW. I see a lot of bright things for him in his future, and it wouldn't shock me if when his AEW contract is up, if he's still sort of in the same spot now, he jumps over to WWE. Uh, Carmel says, what are your top five WWE AEW moments of the year so far? Uh, WWE moments uh, would be Ilya Walter. It would be uh, uh, Sasha Banks versus Bianca at WrestleMania. It would be uh, Bianca Belair winning the Royal Rumble. It would be uh, Roman Reigns stacking uh, Edge and Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. And uh, I'm sure there's another one that I, I can't think of right now off the top of my head. Uh Probably, oh, everything Seth Rollins has been doing as the Drip King. It's been great. AEW moments, uh, all out, all out, all out, all out, and uh, uh, all out. Those, yeah, probably the Brody celebration of life. I think that was this year. I know he passed around Christmas time. They probably did the celebration shortly after, so it was probably around the beginning of the year. B -b -b insert channel name here. If you were to have any manager, who would it be? It'd be Arn Anderson. I really, I, Arn needs to get off Cody Island. He fits there, but Arn Anderson is really, he's terrific, man. He's the coach. He's got the, the Waffle House menu with him all the time. It's great. Clay Williamson, wrestling guilty pleasure. He says mine is WCW Jeff Jarrett slap nuts. Yeah, in retrospect, that's actually grown on me a little bit. I'm, 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 I, I like that as well. My wrestling guilty pleasure is 1994, 1995. WWF for 1991 and 1993 WCW. A lot of weird stuff going on there. A lot of crazy like matchups. A lot of wrestlers just getting their start that you'll see, you know, blow up big uh, five, ten years down the line. Um, yeah, I'd say it's those. Like not terribly great wrestling, especially WWF 1994, 1995. A lot of those Raws are tough to watch. But uh, but it's always fun. It's always just weird and interesting. I think Raw back then was only an hour anyways. Anyways, that's going to do it for the AMA today. Thanks, everybody, for your questions. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll be back on Friday with another WrestleJuice. Thanks for watching. Watch one of these other videos right here. I have other videos to choose from. And then if you want to go... Oh, by the way, some of you are interested uh, when I mentioned doing comics in the last video. MFShopHere.com is where you can get my comic books. They're still available there. If you really want to know about my comic books, that, that's where you go. Bye, everybody.